Come on in, come on in. I want to talk about something here, real quick. I want to talk about something here. Can y'all hear me? Yes, y'all can hear me. Okay. I want to do this real quick if I can. All right. Let me move this this way. This is a teaching lesson for those of you who um, are still up. It is 11.05 in the p.m. on a Saturday. I want to teach y'all something that I uh, have discovered. Okay? Um, there are no Christian melodies. All right? And I'm going to demonstrate that for you. Because I think it's important that you see this. Uh, there are no Christian melodies, right? Okay, those are cute chords and anybody can play no matter where they are. There are melodies here that I can play on this piano that are beautiful to the naked ear or to those of you who are listening. I'm doing this because I want to debunk the whole aspect of gospel music opposed to secular music in that just because someone says secular don't mean evil. Because many of us listen to secular songs, I know I do, and some of you deep Christians says, how, how could you possibly listen to secular music after you just told us that those who are making money in the secular industry is out of God. See, that's what your problem is because you can't really uh, get to the, the gist of the matter. Many of you who got married, you got married in church and you played Luther, Nita Baker, and um, got all of them. you played a whole lot of secular songs as you marched down uh, that church aisle, didn't you? Yes, you did. And you went to the reception and you played some, maybe some instru instrumental jazz songs. Yes, you did. You did that. But you said, well, we don't listen to, you married couples out there don't put on Mahalia Jackson to make love. You don't do that. You, you don't put on Kirk Franklin to make love, okay? You just, you just don't do it. If you do, then y'all some deep folks. Give me some Luther. All right, so this song here is right here. El Shaddai, El Shaddai, El El Yon Sounds familiar? Lord, we live your name on high. El Shaddai. Sounds very familiar, right? El Shaddai. El Shaddai. song very spiritual it is a, a wonderful minor type thing okay oh but in the 1970s you heard this tune The song is called Suicide is Painless. Because there are no such thing as gospel melodies. There are only gospel lyrics. Yeah, you hear it very, yep. Yeah. I know I, you thought you heard it somewhere. I can play a hundred songs right now that sound like one of your church songs or sound like a song from the hymn book. And then I can go on TV land or go on YouTube and type in some songs that sound exactly the same way. You know why? Because there are no gospel melodies. 
It only becomes gospel once somebody put a lyric to it and then become familiar to you. Watch this. Uh, Amazing grace shall always be my song of praise. Y'all already know what I'm going to hear. Liberty, I do not know. Y'all already know. Okay, well, the, which one was made first? That or old Danny Boy? The pipes, the pipes were chiming, whatever the words are. Okay, it's an old, it's a, it's an old song from the uh, from the old west. And these songs, uh, the melodies come to a man or a woman's head and they begin to map it out, and then they decide what type of song that will be when they come together with what's called a lyricist. You see, when you hear a melody like this, uh, Classical, all right, but that's Gershwin. Well, the man who's playing it is George, but the man who put the lyric to it is his brother Ira, Iris, Iris, Ira, and yeah, <laughs> get those two mixed up, all right. The lyricist was the brother of George, and the, the intent of the melody was to make a classical song, or was to make a stage song, okay, was to you know, be, uh, Porky and Bess. All right, um, sunrise, watch this. Sunrise, sunset, sunrise, sunset. From filler on the roof. Uh, 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 if I was a rich man, la da 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 Okay, and if you ever go to a church, a white church with a CCM, that's contemporary gospel music, especially in the South, or you go to some churches that are influenced, that's Hebrew right there. that Middle Eastern, that Arabian feel, and you'll hear this in a lot of our CCM churches, right? Okay, so that's, that was a whole lot of songs that I just played right here. As a matter of fact, um, walk with me, Lord, walk with me. I just change the rhythm a little. I want Jesus to walk with me. Now watch this. Those of you who come up in the 1970s, you might have heard this. Figure eight. The battleville. The The Figure eight song of uh, of a uh, uh, schoolhouse rock. There are no gospel melodies. A man sits at the piano. He begins to play a melody that he's hearing, and then it depends on what side he wants to push that melody on. Depending on is he a lyricist or he brings someone in as a lyricist. Okay, what are you saying here? It, it, is it just me? I'm not seeing or hearing you, Walter. I'm just okay. That's you. I'm hoping that's just you. 
All right. Um, I remember one time at church, the organ man was playing a, a some that had the melody of a James Brown song. I stopped and sat down and said, "The devil is a lie." You see what I'm saying? And many, many of these, um, many of these songs uh, in churches, yes, have influence. But many of the secular song, many of the secular songs that we hear, at least what we heard in the day, were influenced by the church. Okay. Uh, we already know, um, oh, when the saints go marching in, when the saints go marching in, oh, Lord, I want to be in that number, when the saints go marching in. Okay, this is, what is that? You got ragtime there. You got Dixieland, depending on the instruments that's played, but ragtime is mostly on the keyboard, and you got the you got what's called a lip, a lift, a lift, okay, and you got what's called a um, uh, what they call that. Anyway, <laughs> you hear a lot of that in a lot of the Baptist churches, okay. <laughs> Church of God in Christ may have a whole, they may add a whole lot of embellishments in there and a whole lot of jazz chords in there, okay? But you still got that bounce going on, okay, on, on the left. Uh, wasn't that a, 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 yeah, aristocrats, yeah? Uh, what is it? What is it? The cat, okay? Uh, Corella the veil, Corella the veil. Okay, that's straight uh, Walt Disney. Again, the influence of African American music. That's really what that rag comes from. A big band come from us. Uh, actually, rock influenced by us. Okay. <laughs> But church, that's really all what it is. You can name any congregation a song right now, especially in the Pentecostal church. Traveling shoes, gotta love my traveling. Traveling shoes, gotta love my traveling Okay, that's, that's straight rock and roll. That's all it is. And blues is the same way. church, a, a small storefront church, or you in the south, you're going to hear a whole lot of bluesy stuff, okay? Um, gosh, there's a whole bunch of them that I can think of. Uh, what do you say, 101 Dalmatians, yep, Little Richard, come on, that's that's all this is, right here. This is a pretty melody right here. this in church, y'all say, this boy is going into worship. It sounds like maybe a CCM song. Pretty, right? I'm going to tell you what that is. If I was in a club, I'd do this. Do I ever cross your mind anytime? Do you ever wake up reaching out for me? Do I ever cross you? See what I'm saying? That's straight Brian McKnight. Same melody. It, it's the intent of the heart or the mind or the creator. Who created that, that melody? All right, the world don't own that melody. 
the man who created that uh, that circle, all right, whether it's a circle of fifth or a pattern, the man who sat down there and created that particular pattern, he may not have created it. He could have been influenced by another song, another genre, but he, at that moment, created or uh, put together that particular circle, and then he put lyrics on it, all right? And then he made, he made it gospel because of the lyrics. Does it make any sense? I know Ververly, this, this is what I do. So people say, uh, when, so when some musicians are in church and they're playing, you say, ooh, that's a worldly song. How do you know it's worldly? What makes it worldly is the familiarity of how it was created. That circle, that sound, uh, that, that particular song has a particular sound because where the musician placed those chords, one, two, three, four, what he did was he filled in the pattern or the puzzle. And that puzzle made up a picture. Y'all used to get the box. Uh, and when back in the day, when we were patient, didn't have computers, we would buy a box of, of puzzle pieces. And then we would put those puzzles together, and it brought up a familiar picture. Well, that's what music does. This... Because I played it like that, it filled in the picture. It put all the puzzles together together. And what it did was it put that melody to Brian McKnight. But you notice earlier, before you knew I was playing a Brian McKnight, that was a beautiful melody to you. And some of y'all went into worship, didn't you? It's because of the intent. It's because of the lyrics. Because there is no such thing as gospel melodies. None. It's, which means there ain't no such thing as a secular melody either. It's just secular lyrics. The only secular... Okay. Uh, perhaps because we've been drawn into emotionalism, we can't recognize the difference because our minds haven't been renewed. That's true. We get into a place where we can't recognize it. We can't recognize it because we've been so influenced by the secular world more than we did by religious music or what was used to be called sacred music. Okay, We've been so influenced by secular music and then when we brought it in the church, so now nobody could tell the difference other than those who were kind of old school, those who have the spirit of God in them, they can kind of tell the difference. Even by a melody, they can, they can kind of tell the difference or the intent of the melody. That's why you have to use discernment to say the intent of that melody is wrong. If that's making any sense, okay? If that's making any sense. Yes, Demetri Pitts, music is just music. The melody is just music, all right? Put a certain beat or rhythm pattern to it, and what that does, it separates it into a particular man has done this. He placed it into a particular genre. So if I put a beat to that, now it's it's hip hop, it's R and B, it's soul. Okay, it it's uh it it, it might be Jamaican. Okay, and what have you? Kirk Franklin uses worldly melodies in most of his songs. Like melodies from heaven, for example, melodies from heaven rain down on me, rain down on me. Okay, who made who said that was a secular melody? Clarence, is that what you're saying? Are you saying that is a secular melody because Kirk Franklin did it? Now, if I had done it, would you still call that a secular melody? If your pastor had done it, would that be a secular melody? Or was it because Kirk Franklin did it? Okay? When I first heard that melody, I didn't hear secular. All right? I didn't hear it at all. I, felt I heard original gospel when I heard it. Now, of course, when I heard Stomp, then, of course, I heard Parliament because he pretty much almost sampled to the T. Uh... <laughs> of the group. One nation under a group. Okay? Because Parliament did it first, it brought me to a familiar place. If he hadn't done it first and Kirk Franklin did it first, then I wouldn't ha I wouldn't be thinking about nobody but what Kirk Franklin's intent was. If it makes any sense. Okay? And this is difficult. Sometimes it's hard to explain because we're all we're all, all of us are caught into this web. This net 
It's just America. The America has uh, caused us to be almost, in a sense, brainwashed to the styles of music that we perform. Okay? Um, right here, watch this. Uh, this is a beautiful song. Uh, the, uh, those familiar things will mess you up every time. What is it? Um, Andre Crouch. I'll never leave you, never forsake you. No matter what you're going to, I have good news for you. I'll be with you. gospel. I mean, you hear it. What made that melody gospel, though? Number one, that first of all, Andy Crouch. Number two, Marvin Winans. Because he put it on there twice. Number three, that beautiful choir backing him up. Going into a familiar sound because of the vocals. Okay? It all sounds beautiful. But you could also hear this. Uh, I'm not meant to live alone Turn this house into a home where I cried You see what I'm saying? Da, 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 da. You see how the familiarity, you see how things overlap over each other? There's a few songs that I heard, I wrote a song that has the same melody. I wrote it in 19, I wrote it in 2001, that same melody, and I wrote it as a love song to a girlfriend, same melody, 2011, I heard it again on Andre Crouch's project, and I wanted to go and hit somebody, I said, oh my God, and then my friend who knew the song that I wrote, he said, Walter, that's your song, I said, it's not my song, not anymore. I have a melody that I wrote in 2001 just like that. Ten years later, Andre Crouch releases a song just like he never heard my song and I never heard his. We just that it's so it's only so many chords on the keyboard. It's only it's only so many. And you're gonna find things overlapping after a while. And so and I heard I says, well, I can't release my song ever because they're gonna think I'm sampling Andre Crouch's I leave you, never forsake you, no matter what you go. My melody is almost verbatim almost. That made me say, wow, I guess I sat on that. But it wasn't meant for me to release that song because it was a song to my girlfriend. Uh, where is my cutie pie or something I said. It was something, it was, it was weird, right? But that was my hit. Okay, if that makes any sense to y'all. <laughs> Didn't even hear that. I know for Verley you're learning some stuff. That's also an opera song melody too. Come on, Barris Bolton. I'm glad you're here because this is a music extraordinaire here, Barris Bolton. He's Chicago's famous. Okay? So this, this stuff here that you're hearing uh, is so familiar to many of you. And you, you, you sit in church and say, where have I heard that before? Where have I heard that before? And I'm not talking about songs where it was a secular song first, and then it became a gospel song. Uh, um. Jesus is the best thing that ever happened. Jesus is the best thing that ever happened. Jesus. Okay, that's a beautiful song. By itself. All right? Gladys Knight did it first, but the way she did it, it's, it's soulful. The way Cleveland did it, it's gospel. Same melody, 
different lyrics because there's no such thing as gospel or um, or gospel or secular melodies. It's only have to do with the lyric form. Um, who else did it? Watch this. Uh, From the honeycomb, one ass, 1971, maybe. But Mary Mary did it again. Oh, okay, I got to get myself together. So I'm not really talking so much about that. But if we heard Mary Mary's version first, we would have said original, that straight gospel. And then, and if honeycomb did it second, then we say, ah, oh, see what they did? Why? It's a familiarity thing. Uh, uh, as I've done, uh, who can I run to? Ricky did it, redid it years ago, okay? A lot of these songs, we took them, we admired them, and we borrowed them from the world. Today, it's difficult to find many secular songs that were borrowed from the church. Back in the day, that's all he was doing. Back in the 40s and the 50s and the 60s, the world was borrowing our songs, okay? They were putting words like hallelujah in there. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of songs in the 70s that secular artists wrote, but they borrowed from the Bible. Uh, 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 what is it? To everything. straight that's rock and roll singer songwriter era of 1970s a white rock band what they do they went right into the bible went right to ecclesiastes and word for word there it is okay there's some beautiful songs in there hallelujah hallelujah Okay, it goes in the minor fifth and the quarter note and the something, something, and then, and then, and then, hallelujah. Okay, it's a beautiful, beautiful song about uh, the story of David and pleasing the Lord and, and it brought in evil versus good. It's just simply called Hallelujah. It ain't written by us, it's written by a secular man. It's a, it's a soft rock song. It's beautiful, but we didn't write it. Okay? Um, I was in high school when I heard it. Mercy, mercy me. And my teacher said that. ain't no gospel song. No, that, that was written by the world. That, you, that because it's got mercy, mercy me in it. Okay? Right here. 
Because it says heaven in there, step by step. You got songs that got angels in it and things like that. We gospel or Pentecostal people are saved, folks. Right away we say, that guy got to be saved. Why? Because he put some, some inspirational, churchy, religious, biblical, scriptural lyrics in there. And right away we're so weak-minded that we think the folk are saved because they're singing our songs. And that's how the church... Uh, being infiltrated so easily is through our music. Through this keyboard right here, snakes have entered into our churches through music. That's how they get you. You want to get to a child, you infiltrate the cartoon network. That's how you get the kids. You want to get to black folk, find their entertainers. You want to get to religious people, go to their music. Go to gospel music. And recreate it and watch how they fall in love with you. I know, I know I'm messing up, Danielle, I'm messing up. And that's how we are easily deceived. Yep, that's that's what Ray Charles did, Clarence said. I can't stop loving you. I made up my mind. Straight Southern uh, country, <laughs> okay. Southern and country is kind of oxymoronic. With you know, pretty much when you think country, you think Southern. Although there's there's country in the South, uh, in the North, I mean. But that's straight. What he did was he went and jumped over into the country genre. Ray Charles was successful at it, country. But when he went, when he jumped over into the country, he picked up Southern, Southern Bible Belt at the same time. So Ray Charles killed two birds with one stone because he always had that um, gospel sound, which got him in trouble. Y'all saw the movie, Ray. It got him in trouble from the church because they felt that he was taking what God has given the church and he was donating it to the world. Seemed like the opposite is happening. The same thing is happening, or the opposite is happening, because you got the secular now coming over here and joining forces with us. So Ray Charles is doing exactly uh, to the country arena what Snoop Dogg now is, did to the reggae arena and what Snoop Dogg is doing now to the gospel arena. Because what he did with his Bible of Love is the exact same thing, and it had the exact same effect that... It did when he changed his name to Snoop Lion and he went over there to the reggae world, released a compilation CD with reggae art and other artists right there, and it won and it went number one. <laughs> same thing years ago. Then he came over to the gospel arena, did the same thing, used the same people in that genre, and it went number one. If you go over there to the country world, he'll do the same thing, he'll become number one. Why? That's how you can infiltrate people, get to their music. It's the Pied Piper. The Pied Piper win more folk than any evangelist I know. Oh, you finna hurt some feelings. I know, Danielle, I, I hurt feelings every single day. I do. It doesn't, it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter where you live. I don't care if you're in Africa. Because right here, that's a melody. Somewhere. That's beautiful music. Music is music. As a matter of fact, I've heard this out of maybe some of that acid, uh, uh, either acid rock, or I've heard this uh, out of the bebop era of the 1940s and 50s or that that, um, what they call that kind of jazz, where it's just so confusing. It has no form, and it's just, it's just all over the place. Just like that. It's, all, it's crazy, all right? 
but that's music to that's those people, to those musicians over in Africa. It it made this. That's music to their ears. So us is like, oh, okay, but our music may sound like ah oh, to their ears. Why? Because music is music. God created it, and He really created it for Himself and for you to sing it, encourage one another in it, and for to to really worship the Lord and to encourage one another. He made it for that. And of course, like everything else that he created, Satan took it. Because he wants to emulate God. He wants to be God. That's why he got kicked out of heaven. He wanted to be not just like God, he wanted to be God. And so he's trying to emulate everything that God does. Even to the fact that he, to the point of having an unholy trinity. There, there's a Father, Son, and Holy Ghost for those of you who believe that. I know some of y'all are maybe of that other side, okay, who don't believe in that Trinity stuff, that's fine. It just, don't fight with me right now. Let's stay with music, okay? But Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, there's going to be the Antichrist, there's going to be Satan, and then there's going to be the false prophet, all right? Somebody going to get going to get killed and rise up on the third day, okay, over there in, in Satan's uh, uh, unholy Trinity. I mean, he's trying to emulate Jesus Christ is the lion of the tribe of Judah, but the Bible says that Lucifer, a Satan, is a is like a roaring lion. He wants to emulate everything that God has. He's the God of this world. He's the principality. He wants to do everything. So of course he's going to infiltrate the music because what, what was his job in heaven? He was the chief musician, the chief minstrel. And the Bible says he was an anointed cherub. He walked. He had holes in his pipes, the Bible says. He had pipes in his body, and when he walked, the music just played. Can you imagine somebody just walking? And the music just played. As soon as I stop, it stops. It's like musical chairs. That was Lucifer. He was a bad mother. Shut your mouth. I'm just talking about Lucifer. We can dig it, okay? I know, Demetria. So, this, this thing right here is serious, and until you know how it works, you won't know how it works. That sounds weird, don't it? Until you know how this works, then you'll know when somebody comes to you with it how to resist it, go against it. Because the man plays for your church don't mean uh, he's playing holy music. Don't mean don't mean a heal of being. It's the intent of the musician. It's the intent of the evangelist or the pastor or the, or the missionary or apostle. It's the intent of them, okay, that will cause you to either uh, follow the Lord or follow that person. And y'all are easily deceived, especially through music, all right? All right, somebody give me a hymn so that I can go and shut this down and... Um, you know, and uh, go to bed. Because it's Saturday night and I'm surprised that some of y'all are still up. All right? Somebody give me a hymn and then what you can do is we can rewind this tape and check the stats. Go ahead and check and give me some fact checking and say, Brother Jones, you're wrong. And that's fine. You can disagree with me, but I lived this thing for almost 40 years. I've been doing this both in the world and in the church and I said, no more world. Bye, 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 world. And I decided to dedicate this to the Lord. And I never had to worry about where my money going to come from. And that's why I can't understand why y'all think you got to go out there in the world to make the money because y'all keep saying, that's my job. That ain't, that ain't your job. That's your desire. You want to go out there in the world and make that money. That's your desire. But if you can't make money a living among Christian music, in Christian music, or the gospel arena, if you can't make enough money to sustain you, then there's something you doing wrong. And you you making God weak. You're saying that you can't trust God to sustain you in this industry, so you go out there, because Jay-Z called, you picked up the phone and said, okay, yeah, I'm going to go over there because that's my job. I can't afford to stay among Christians because they ain't buying my records, so I got to go out there. And that's why some people were trying to defend, um, what's her name, Williams, Michelle Williams, for doing the, the the Coachella project with Beyonce and the other girl and saying she she had to take the gig. That's her job. No, she didn't. Do you not know Michelle Williams is well off? Michelle Williams can buy y'all a few times. Michelle Williams got good money, good living, all right? She didn't have to go over there. She wanted to go over there. 
I know. I know. First thing you you learn in art is it is because it, it is belief, and you cannot create without leaving your spirit and spirits impression on it. Belief. Who? Close, closer to thee. Which one are you talking about? Them? Close to thee. Close to thee. Close to thee. Close to thee. Remember the lyrics. <laughs> Close to the with no lyrics, the world would be like, yeah, that's my jam. They don't know what it is, but that sounds funky to them. It sounds Jamaican to the Jamaican, okay? It may sound Asian to the Asian. Okay? Okay? Because it's a melody. It's a familiar melody to them. That's all it is. Once I put a lyric to it, they'd be like, ooh, I, never mind. Never mind, we don't want that. See, that's the world right there. They want the beat. They want, they want the rhythm. They want the melody. As soon as I put a gospel lyric in there, they're like, ooh, no, why? Because the lyric is what calls some type of conviction in their hearts. Ask me how I know. Too many times I'm playing these melodies in, in, in uh, hotels. You know how they have the ho they have the uh, piano in the hotel lobbies when I go to these conventions and what have you go to these weddings and all oh, people fly me around the country and they put me in these beautiful hotels and there's a piano there and the first thing I do I go sit down and I'm like oh that's beautiful that's beautiful I said okay well my Jesus is my savior Jesus, they're like, ooh, uh, never mind. They're gone. They're out of there. It was beautiful at first, wasn't it? I put Jesus in there like, never mind. <laughs> okay? Some of them will hang around and say, oh, okay. Or, and then they'll, then they'll ask for a request. You know, the one, the number one song that all people from all races will ask for? Number one. Anybody know? It was written in 19... 68, I believe it was, by man. He well, he didn't write it. He just rearranged it. Anybody know? Put it in the comments. 1968 was the biggest record for many years. And you go to you go to Africa, Asia. You go to, no, not Amazing Grace. You go anywhere around the world, and that one song is requested by I don't care if they're white. I don't care if they're Hispanic. I don't care. If what color they are, or what if they're Lutheran, Presbyterian, or Catholic, if black folk is in the room and there's a keyboard and they want a gospel song, it's that one song that they want. It is not Amazing Grace. No, I'm talking. I said it was written in 1968. The melody was written in 1968, but the but the lyric. Is an old hymn from the from the 1700s. Many of you didn't know. Thank you, Danielle. Oh, happy day! Oh, happy day is a hymn from 1700, and Edwin Hawkins came together in 1968 and put a melody to it. Okay, he didn't put. 
he didn't put he put his melody to it, what I meant. He put his melody to it and took the same lyric and put it on there. 1968 became a number one hit, all right? He took the, he went down there to, he was in California, and it says Edwin Hawkins sings, but it's really the, the North, the Northern California Church of God in Christ choir is really what it is. It's a culture choir, but the recording label did not want to give a, a, a um, contract to a church to a church, and obviously there's a reason why, because you can't manage all those people. You just don't want to give contracts to churches. Many labels didn't want to do that, especially at that time. So he had to change the name to the Edwin Hawkins Singers, because there was only a few of them. And so, bam, he got the credit for it, but who's singing in the background is the Church of God in Christ State Choir, in, in a sense. The North the North California State Choir, okay? So Happy Day was big, big, big hit, and no matter where we go, no matter where I am, I can be in the darkest, darkest woods of, of uh, Georgia, where the KKK is everywhere. And if they tell me to sing, to yo, sing us a song before we string you up on that tree, I'll say, any request? They're going to say, sing old happy day, Negro. Okay? Bam, there it is. I've gone, I've gone to every, every place I've ever gone where there was another uh, race of people. That always is the number one song. Okay? They just want to hear your your uh they want to hear your native song. Alright? Well I didn't know that. I know. Thank you, Daniel. You're welcome. Okay? Alright, so somebody was asking for a hymn. I mean I asked for a hymn and somebody put it it is well in the NP. I don't know, I don't know. That's what style is that? Somebody can somebody put in the comments since y'all still up. What style did I just play? It is well in. Help me out. Natasha, that's not Waltz. Oh, oh, okay. You know, I'm, I'm going to give you an A. I'm going to give you an A for that. Because you did hear the Waltz is, is a 3 4. Okay. I didn't do a 3 4, but, but you kind of heard a step towards Waltz. So I'm going to give you an A for effort. But it wasn't, it wasn't Waltz. Okay. Charleston. Well, Vicky, what do you mean, Charleston? No. Can, Y'all can't tell me what style of music, what genre of music that was? Somebody said Baroque. If it ain't Baroque, y'all know the corny joke. Don't face it. Baroque. Yes. Uh, Brentick says Romantic Era. <laughs> there it is right there. <laughs> Daniel said Yankee. <laughs> romantic. And uh, we always get that Romantic Era. We, we think it means, oh, my love, that romance. No, it's not romantic because it's romance. It's romantic because it's from Rome. Uh, French or Italy, uh, Roman Empire, okay? That's what romantic means. All right, y'all got it? Okay, Renaissance. Renaissance. So all those are the same. Baroque, Romantic, Renaissance, okay? All of those, that classical era, it's, it goes back to 1600 and keep going on down. All right, it started, it started they're still creating it now, but there was the heyday of, of that, that, that period 
from 1700 on down, just like um, uh, the era of, of, of Big Band. It, it was there, then it was gone. The era of bebop was there, and then it was gone, okay? Modern jazz and what have you. Sound like cowboy music, very, very. <laughs> now, the fact that many of you didn't get that right, it kind of disturbs me, though, because many African-American Pentecostals are caught in one style or genre of music, and many of you have walked away from American music, which were created by you. Do you not know African Americans created most of the styles or genres of, of American music? African Americans do it. And many whites uh, still admit every time you, you talk to a very famous white person and you ask them who was their influence, their top five list, there's going to be a black man or a black woman in that top five list. Jerry Lee Lewis, Elvis Presley, uh, gosh, you can uh, build uh, in the in the what's that? Uh, rock around the clock tonight. Okay, Bill, whatever his name is, Bill Haley. I think all those guys accredited their success or their influence from Little Richard or um, Mother uh, Rosetta Tharp. Influence, of course, Elvis Presley and Jerry Lee Lewis, all right? And many of the other whites. So many of the whites say, we wouldn't be who we are, whatever genre we're playing, if it wasn't for some black man or some black woman. Okay? And y'all need, need to know that. So this classical here... Okay? Don't just give credit to all white folk for this classical. Oh, no, because a lot of, if, if y'all go further back into slavery, you'll see, you'll hear some of the influence that a lot of whites had when they heard blacks, uh, the, they heard the slaves singing. You'll see some of the things that they did, especially blacks who ha had the ability to play what y'all call the fiddle, all right? It means that I don't know that music, what? My, what? It means that I don't know that much about music. Oh, Natasha, okay. <laughs> The Baroque era, 1700, 1750, uh -huh, there were no harpist chords during the Renaissance. Brentick is giving us a lesson here, y'all. That's good stuff. I got a harpsichord on here. And all that is is the Brady Bunch. I'm not the Brady Bunch, it's the Partridge family. Come on, Lord in the world, have to sing it. The money happy. I should be asleep, but you got me thinking. I know. First slave music was played in Ireland, by the way. Shante says we were denied copyright and trademark. They stole a whole lot of our stuff. Whole lot of it. Uh, they stole it. They stole it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good stuff right there. Okay? So I look at somebody like Richard Smallwood. Thank God for Richard Smallwood and Thomas Dor Not Thomas Dorsey. Thomas Woodfield. Those two right there encompassed something. They brought back something or they preserved something. Richard Smallwood, a lover of classical music, uh, his teacher uh, was, uh, what's the name? Where is love? Da 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 Where is love? What's the name? You used to sing those duets with, um, with, um, Donnie Hathaway. That was his music teacher. They were, he was enrolled in, I think she was a teacher at Howard University there in, 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 uh, in Atlanta, okay? But he 
a lover of classical music, and I thank God that he continued this, that classical sound because without it, many of the musicians today wouldn't know it. All right, they wouldn't know it. Um, uh, what's her name? Yeah, y'all put me her name there. Um, he he did this. Thomas Dorsey, Th Thomas Woodfield did, he did some classical stuff, but what he did was he surrounded with a jazz, a heavy jazz influence. Just in case you forgot my name is Jesus. to this little jazz field. Oh, it's just crazy. When he did that song with uh, Vanessa Bell Armstrong, uh, what is it? And then go back to his jazz. with some touches and sprinkles of classical. But Richard Smallwood stayed true to a hymn, old style hymn type classical way which separate the two of them. And we let it, we a lot of times like to compete them, put them together, but you can't. You gotta separate the two. They are two different beasts in their own rights. Baroque is a heavy ornamentation Bach and handle classical 1750 literally li literally the death of Bach uh, to 188 the 1800 is more uh, orderly Mozart Mozart and Hayden Beethoven is the transit this is good Bridget ignored stuff yes that's good man gonna make me do some acapella tomorrow <laughs> ah yeah that's good but that's that's good uh,
right there. Classical. Something that we're familiar with. Uh, um, what's it called? Uh, the, the name the name slips me. But that style right there, although it's an old time classical tune, you hear this a lot in many of the songs that Richard Smallwood might have brought back in in the 1980s, and we start hearing it more so. Revert. Uh, we start hearing it in uh, CCM a lot, eventually. Okay, not like that because that's that's waltz. we did hear though in a lot of motion picture movies when we heard a when we heard it when we saw a scene on the TV that was emotional whether it was a love scene or whether it was a death scene or whether it was a sad scene okay a murder scene or what have you somebody's sick that's what you heard if it was a, an upbeat happy uh, ending then then of course, of course the chord change and that's what minors do minors bring in sadness but it also bring in a sense of warfare as well that's what that's why y'all have these that, that's what black folk do ah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Ah, okay. that's all, all minors and that's roaring that's warfare okay that's go go ahead Warfare. That's what that's all about. But if you were in a church that's not that's not that charismatic, minors work in a different way. It works more CCM as worship, not so much warfare. Okay. Praise the Lord, everybody. Give God all of you. He deserves all of you. He deserves all of you. All of you And, and, and many of your churches now, that's the flow that y'all are moving now. But that wasn't the flow in your father's church. This was the flow. I bind the devil. Come out of this point right now. Ooh, yeah. Okay, it's still minor. Okay, it's just a different flow, a different flavor, different strokes for different folks. Is that making any sense? Scott Joplin was a ragtime composer. Okay, ragtime is jazz combined European music with African style rhythms. Most of the uh, most of the shot music. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's true. We talked about that earlier, Brendan. We talked about the difference between ragtime and what's called Dixieland. You hear a lot of Dixieland in the South, and it's usually played uh, on the banjo as Dixieland. Ding, ling, ding, ling, 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 ding, ling. Okay, I, I, I can't see, but I got a banjo on here somewhere, somewhere, okay? But... And that rhythm on that left hand is what's, what's really holding it up. Causes the right hand to be able to, to make the melody. Is that back and forth? And all these cats, that's what made them famous is that that whole being able to do that, um, they, they call it stride. The left hand is called the stride because that's what it's doing. It's just stride. Ah, I'll tell you, man, I, I'm late. My bad. Sorry, Brenton. That's all right. <laughs> right. Shout music the same way. Yeah, because y'all do. Shout music is really rock and roll. It's, it's, it's sped up. <laughs> fast you can go. I'm tired, so I, I can't do it anymore. 
So I'm tired. I can't play. I made all kind of mistakes, but that's what shout music is. Good God in this morning, show up at the party. Who's God in this morning? Show up at the party. That's what that is. Shout music. Shop music, rock and roll, same thing. Black folks, that's what we do. We, we can slow down. Now it's blues. Thrill is gone, baby. Thrill is gone away. Okay, that's what that is. Ah, oh, man, I can't do this with y'all. Traveling shoes It can still fit. That's what we do. We're good at doing call and responses, depending on the beat. So it went from blues to jazz to shout, to shout call, to rock and roll. Same thing. The rhythm changes it all. That's why I said earlier, it's all about that rhythm. It's all about uh, what's called the, um, it's called the, uh, what is it called? I, I, I can't think, y'all. I can't, I can't think, Pamela. You back to Little Richard? Yep. Mm -hmm. Artists like Luther, Whitney, and, and Fantasia, gifted, talented, but they are anointed. Uh, you ask, are they anointed? Oh man, Chuck Bears, run, run, Rudolph. Yeah, run, run, Rudolph. It's straight church. It sure is. It sure is. Uh, it's called meter. Thank you. M e t e r. Meter is the word I was looking for. Uh, you, you, you. <laughs> hey, Melissa, I love you, girl. Uh, somebody says some Aaron Phillips. Here's the thing about anointed. Here's the thing about anointed. People throw out that word anointed quite a bit. People throw out the word anointed. And they give it to any musician in church who causes Sister Bobo to fall out. After she done played or he, why he playing, she falls out on the floor. He must be anointed. No, Sister Bobo got an emotional issue. Sister Bobo will fall out on everything in, at, at any ish, uh, entity or, or issue that is because she was at the club the night before and when she heard Luther, she fell out too. Oh, that's my jam. Oh, that's Sister Bobo. Luther ain't anointed. That's her. I see that a lot going on in our churches. Right away, y'all going to... Because there's a familiar sound. When that, when that sound gets in there, everybody come from the back seat into the to the front, and they grab partners and they start dancing. All right. And when the music stops, guess what? They stop. Pipe piper. Oh, pie to the piper. It is entertaining to a lot of you. Don't make the musicians anointed at all. They learned that skill. And when in Rome, you do what the Romans do. These same musicians was playing for Jay-Z the night before. Booty, grinding, bumping, and grinding music. They're at church now, and now they're anointed all of a sudden at church. But are they anointed at the club? We throw out the word anointed for everybody, and I think we loosely, we use that to describe everything, and I think it's unfair. People use anointing in a very objective manner these days. Yes, they do. Extremely gifted. Gifts come without penance. Yes, that's true. Um, that, that scripture simply means God will not, God will not repent. Uh, he will not revoke. Okay, he will he will not repent for giving a particular gift. And he wasn't talking about music, by the way. He was talking about the Jews, and that's a whole another story. But the system reigns true. Okay, 
is that there's, there are many people who walk out, out of the world and into the church and start playing. That don't make them anointed. That don't even make them gifted. That just means that they got a good talent. Because there is no music in the list of, of spiritual gifts. Music is not a spiritual gift in Scripture. The gifts of the Holy Spirit out of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, chapter 13, chapter 14, music is nowhere in there. Nowhere part of the gift because this is a talent. Now, what God does, though, with this talent is he can activate uh, certain things through his talent because God made it. It don't necessarily have to be a gift. It could be a talent, and God could use it like he could use many other things that's not a gift, but he uses it. He uses objects. He used, y'all like to use that donkey who, who preached to the prophet who was a stubborn man, okay? So he used the ass, all right? And yes, all right, so he can use children as well. He used the enemy to teach the Jews a lesson. He, so he uses a musical talent also to activate certain things. Understand that. King David, uh, well, he wasn't king then, but uh, David was an, an anointed uh, man of God, but he was also was called skillful. Get that. He was skillful in playing the harp. What God did was take his skill and cause it to cast out an evil spirit from Saul. I don't think y'all I don't think y'all understanding that. So y'all saying David was anointed or he was gifted to play the harp. Did the Bible say he was gifted to play the harp? Or did he have a, a supernatural skill? Did he have a talent to play it? And then through whatever anointing he had, whatever he picks up is going to work for God. Get that. If a man is anointed, ah, let me go, here you go again. Okay. Is this oil anointed or is the man, the anointed man Holding the oil anointed. Because you can give this oil to someone off the street and tell them to anoint me and to heal me. or put, And then they do all this all they want to. Nothing will happen. Is, is, the, is it in here? Is it, was it in Samson's hair? Cutting his, was the strength in his hair or was the strength in his obedience? Where was it? Oh, I, I don't, I don't go on all over the place. Okay? So is it, who, 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 whose hand is it? The Ark of the Covenant... Uh, was in the hands of both the Hebrews and it was also in the hands of the Philistines. But while it was in the hands of the Philistines, God used the people mightily because they, the ark went with them to war. I understand that. And God killed the man for touching the ark. There was something amazing about the ark. The ark, but then why didn't God kill the Philistines when they captured the ark and brought it in, in, into their, their temple? How did the Philistines get the ark in the temple if God killed a man, one of the Hebrews, because he just touched it? But the Philistines captured it. You didn't hear nothing about them dying, and they were able to take it to the ark because it had everything to do with the person. And then what God did was show them by allowing their God, Dagon, to fall. And God decapitated the, uh, the Dagon, while that ark was there to, to teach a lesson because he was trying to get that ark back to his people. Ah, oh, man, I can't do this. Oh, I can't. Lord have mercy. You're going to do the same thing in the morning service. Yeah, like Dwayne, Dwayne P. Rose, brother, blessings to you. I love you, man. Why does anointing only apply to preaching, singing, and playing? Brendick, there it is. There it is. You the man. You the man. Because the fivefold ministry... Is apostle, uh, let's see, evangelist, prophet, pastor, and teacher. Teacher is at the bottom, and in most cases, the teacher is not recognized. I don't understand it. My gift is teaching. That's what God gave me, but many people won't recognize it as a gift unless I say I'm an apostle or a pastor or evangelist. A prophet. Y'all always calling for a prophet from across the land, and your pastors bring them in, pay them a lot of money so he can speak over your life, but he don't bring in teachers. The teachers are just as anointed as the prophet. God gave them five gifts. Those five, y'all call fivefold. 
The gifts were the people themselves. Read it again, Ephesians chapter 4. All right, it started at the 11th verse. Because before he ascended, he descended into the lower parts of the earth, and he brought forth gifts. And then it says, these gifts are the apostle, the evangelist, the prophet, blah, blah, blah. And then it says, pastor and teacher. Those gifts are for the perfecting of the saints, for the edifying of the body. All right? It's to perfect us. That's what they are. So what we do is we say, teacher, ah, not that important. So Brentic. I'm with you on this. There are some anointed teachers that are in the school system that are teaching your children. Yes, they are. They're there. God's got them there. I guarantee you that. I guarantee you there's some anointed policemen out there. Yeah. I guarantee you they're anointed to do what they do. God has anointed some judges out there that's sitting on the bench. I bet you do. Ah, oh, y'all can y'all can disagree with me all you want to. The first things were not held accountable for the rules of the ark because God didn't have the covenant with them. Brent it. There it is. Why are you teaching this lesson with me? But you nailed it. Who was the covenant given to? And if the, if there was no if there was no knowledge of a law, can you break that law? There's a tree if a tree falls in the forest. And you're not there to hear it, does it make a noise? If the cop pull you over and say you ran a red light, but there is no law in the books that says running a red light will give me a ticket, can he accuse me of breaking the law? So if God has not established a covenant with me, that's why the Apostle Paul says you are not you don't have the right to judge the world. That's not your right. First Corinthians chapter five. He says, well, what, do I, what, are you, what are you worried about the world for? That's what they do. God judges them. You don't have that right. I gave you a covenant, and you're supposed to adhere to the covenant. And when you don't, kick this man or this woman out and turn him over to Satan so that his soul might be saved. Oh, this is, it's too late to be teaching this. It's too late. I know they weren't bound by that contract. Brentick says they weren't bound. So they were able to pick up the ark. Nobody died, and they were able to carry that ark. But these men were giving a contract and a covenant. The Levites and the priests were giving that covenant. And God told them, you're not supposed to handle that ark like anything. You're supposed to put them on poles and put them on your shoulders and carry it. But what did they do? They took that ark and put it in a horse cart. And the horse buggy was just shaking because, you know, they didn't have paved roads like we did. Although later on in the Roman, the Romans did pave out some roads. But anyway, that's another story. They didn't have it, so they, the, that thing was shaking, and that ooze guy uh, went to stop the ark from falling, and God taught everybody else a lesson by killing that man because he told them not to do it. So what did David do? He parked. He parked that sucker. And where did he put it? He put it in Obed Eden's house. Ah. Now the stories are kind of mixed up here because... Uh, the Philistines, he had, they had just rescued it from the Philistines, I believe, already. So now they got it, and then God killed this man. So uh, I might have switched the stories around. But he parked it in Obed Eden's house. He said, we can't carry this. We can't carry That's funny, though. Maybe they didn't have the wood. Maybe they didn't carry the wood with, with them, so they wasn't able to carry the ark back to the tent. To 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 the to Jerusalem, they couldn't carry it back, so they left it there, and they all left. But the word got around that while the ark was in Obed Eden's house, Brentick, that his whole house was flourishing. <laughs> the Bible says his whole house was blessed because the ark was there. And word got to David that that man's house was blessed. He said, "Oh no, we got to go get that sucker." So what did he do? They went and got it, and they brought the poles with them this time. They said, get that out of this man's house. He's being blessed. Everybody's being healed in his house, and prosperity is coming to his home because the, the ark is in this man's house. And they went and got it and brought it home, and that's why David started. In the army, Lord, wants you to bless my soul. In the army, Lord, wants you to bless. He started dancing out of his clothes. <laughs> And his wife says, hey, hey, you the king. <laughs> you undignified. He says, I'm going to be more undignified than this. In the army, Lord, bless my son. Okay, I can imagine him playing that harp. Oh, Lord, 
Lord have mercy. Y'all done started something here. Started something. There's too many of y'all that need to, y'all need to be in the bed. I, I got music to study, okay? All right, I went too long. What time is it? Oh, I've been on here one hour and 20 minutes. I only want to teach a lesson on there are no gospel melodies. There are only gospel lyrics. That's it. Gospel lyrics. There's melodies galore. God created melodies. He created melodies, melodies, melodies. And he gave it to you to put up whatever melody you want to. It's up to you. All right? And God will anoint whatever your melody is. Whatever it is, God will anoint it. But then once you put lyrics to it, then you categorized it from that moment on. Sacred, secular. Okay? You put lyrics to it, then you categorized it. All right? If you brought a man in to talk to your children, talk to a group of people, what he says could possibly offend them. The lyrics, what he says. But if he came in and said, there's a thousand people in the audience, he just go, they'd be like, oh, that's cute. Oh, that's cute. That's 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 nice. That's nice. But if he said, the Lord is coming and repent, they'd be like, oh, whoa, 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 what, what's, but this, this is a Satan's group. This is. This is the church of Satan. You can't be bringing that stuff up in here. Why? Because it's his lyrics. The melody affected them in different ways. Oh, that's cute. Or somebody, somebody said, I'll be patient. That's, that's all right. No, man, that's all right. It ain't all that. But once he's put lyrics to it, it shifted. Changed the whole room, didn't it? And that's why the, the evangelizing people is not about a song. Evangelizing people is about words. That's how you evangelize people. You can't evangelize people through your music. You got to preach the gospel to them. Everybody in scripture preached the gospel to the world and the world got saved, depending on who it was. They got saved through the priest's word, not the music. Didn't do it. Now, many of you disagree with me on that every time I say it. I don't care. I'm still waiting on you to put it in the comment section here. Show me where music was used in the Bible to evangelize anybody. And no one has yet done it yet. I'm waiting on somebody to put it down there. So how do you characterize what happened in Daniel 3? What happened in Daniel 3? Explain it. Somebody explain it to me. What happened? R. Kelly's bump and grind and never would would have made have the same chord structure. R. Kelly's bump and grind never would have made. Oh yeah, 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 Brendick, that's true. That's true. Shante, I can't I can't hang up this phone <laughs> until you help me with uh, Daniel chapter 3. Help me with it. Help me with it. Help me with it. Okay? Please, if you can, real quick. Uh, so my Bible's way over there. Somebody give me a hymn until she typed that in there. Somebody give me a hymn. Give me a hymn so I can go home. No, I'm already home. So I can go to bed. Somebody give me a hymn. I could do it in my phone. I would rather do it in my phone because I, I, I should have. Why you to come earlier than that, than this, uh, 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 Shante? Girl, you know we ain't got time. I'm trying to shut this thing down. Man, I, uh, I probably need to go to my phone. Man, man. Uh, oh, yeah. It's too long anyway. Chapter 3 is too long. Shante, ah, uh, friends and friends, whoever had the same, uh, um, they, maybe chap, maybe verse eight. I don't know. They spake and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, has made a decree that every man that shall hear the, the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, 
uh, that's what you're talking about, Salt uh, Sultry and Dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And who's ever fell not down? Okay, but what's your point here? Okay, what's, what's your point here? They were ordered to do this. They were ordered to do this. Through, when they heard the melodies, they were ordered to bow. Mm. When we hear the Star Spangled Banner or whatever that melody is, without the lyrics, we were taught to put our hands on our hearts. Whether you lack a miracle or not, you were ordered to do it. If you're in the military, you better do it. Um, the uh, When I was on the military base... In South Dakota, I was I was on the mil military base eating dinner with a military family, and taps started to play outside on the bullhorns throughout that camp. Okay, all right. Yes, to a beat, not a lyric. They were ordered to do it though, Shante. While I was in the uh, kitchen, the mother was preparing the dinner. We're sitting at the table. And as she was preparing the table, taps played. Taps don't have a lyric. Was it? Okay. That's what I heard. As soon as they played taps, as soon as the first note went forth, the family... Did this. It didn't move. And I looked out of the window of the kitchen, and the people who were driving their cars, they pulled over. The, the, peop, the soldiers who were walking down the street, they stopped, and they did that. And I'm eating, and they said, Brother, can you hold it? And I said, Oh, I put my plate down. And I just stood there. I'm a civilian. I don't have to honor it. But out of respect for this man's house, I did. He says, if you were out there on that base and you were driving and that taps was playing and you didn't pull over, they would have gave you a citation. The cops would have pulled you over and gave you a citation. Or somebody on that military base, it could have been a soldier, he would have rebuked you. Yeah. It was a melody. Why? Because where they were. They were in a system, military, and they had to honor it. And so when that last, last note played, they went right back to eating like nothing happened. Taught me a lesson there. It taught me something. Let's me know, uh, lets me know beats are also important too, and yes, that was by order. Yes, beats are important. Uh, Shante, I think you came a little late. I talked about beats, and I talked about how the beats are... Uh, told you what genre it was. Number two told you what culture it was as well. Because I believe God has caused, God has created these beats in men. Uh, I teach choirs on Saturdays and Mondays in Evanston. There's 10, 11 churches that come together every year. And I'm over these choirs. And I, and I, I, I do clinics in our choir rehearsals. Okay, And I teach them about rhythm. So I started playing this song that, that we've been rehearsing forever. I started playing at the beginning of the song, and I said, go! And they sang, and then they didn't, they didn't sing this, this third beat. I said, what's wrong with y'all? What, what? I said, you didn't sing the third beat. Oh, we're sorry. I did it again. And boom, a few more people sang it, but a few more people, I said, shame on you. I said, what? I said, um... All of y'all in here are African Americans. Every one of y'all. And y'all rhythmically have something that God has placed in you. Y'all clap on the two and the four. That's in you. It's an eight in you. All of you. And I didn't have to get up here and direct nothing. I started the song off. I stopped and had you to sing a cappella. And you missed the third beat? How was that possible? They said, oops, we sure did, didn't we? Yes, because you was waiting on somebody to do this when it's already in you and once I told them that I did it again I didn't direct them I did it again and they all all 100% of them nailed it on the third beat and kept singing until I had to tell them stop 
That's us. Uh, I, I know Flora. I missed your birthday. Sis, I love you, girl. I'm going to have to make it up to you. Your birthday was a few days ago. Okay? All right? So rhythm patterns tell us who's doing the performing. Uh, uh. Do you think that's who is that? They're all over the place. Okay, who is that? It tells me that in Chicago, I've got to go down there to. Yeah, yeah, salsa, okay, bossa nova, uh, it, it's Latin, it's, it's all of that, rolled up in one. I go to Pilsen, or I go to Humble Park, and I'm going to hear a whole lot of this music. <laughs> okay, but if I did, uh, uh-oh, I got 10% of this. Uh, where I'm going, what kind of people I'm talking to. And when in Rome, you do what the Romans do. So if you're part of those people, that's the music that you play. That's just the way it is. The Blues Brothers, I thought one of the great episodes, one of the great scenes in the Blues Brothers is when the Blues Brothers band got together and they went to this, uh, this, this uh, bar to gig. They stole the gig from another group and they went there and they started singing their little rock and roll stuff and, and the, those people were throwing stuff at us and said, boo, 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 until they finally started doing Southern Country. And then that whole bar went up, yeah, 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 rawhide. They started singing rawhide, okay, over and over again. And bam, there it is. Um, so that's how, that's how you know. That's how you know people. And so, Shantae, you're right by the rhythm pattern of how the beat goes, whether it's one and three, two and uh, four, or how you manipulate and syncopate, tells us what kind of people are those. Because the Bible says you blow a trumpet and the trumpet has a certain sound and that sound tells the army it's wartime. We won, we lost, it's, it's uh, morning because taps tells, some, tells the military it's morning time. Okay, there's another one that 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 that, that bu bugle plays that tells us it's wartime. Okay, well the, the instruments in our church is supposed to be the same way. It's warfare time, and our worship services shifts. Okay, oh man. Okay, let me stop and go home. I, I keep saying go home, but I'm home. I, I need to go to bed. All right, y'all go ahead and hit the rewind button if you missed it. And, and teach this to your musicians at church. This is our clinic, pretty much. This is the clinic. I don't do this a whole lot unless I feel like I, I have to. Again, yesterday I did a show called Do I Have to Make M Money in Secular Music or something like that. Is secular music my job? I can't remember. If you go to that show, you hear me going off. Fine. This is part two, and it may seem like I'm bipolar, but I was trying to tell y'all at the beginning of this that there are no melodies, there are no gospel melodies, but also that there are a lot of secular songs that I listen to, I adore, I like, okay? You are so beautiful to me. Your grandmama been singing this song forever. It is not a gospel song. Somebody made it out of a gospel song, okay? Um, uh, Nicholas and Nicholas started singing gospel love songs. Uh, they began to take uh, secular songs and make them gospel. Then T.D. Jakes came out with sacred love songs where he didn't borrow from worldly songs to put a, a, a love lyrics to it. These are actual created songs for 
Christians and he called it a sacred love song. And there are some of the most beautiful songs on that project. And when you hear the melody, it makes you think of love. But when you hear the lyrics, it really makes you think about love, loving your mate, dating or loving your husband or your wife or falling in love with her or whatever it is. That's what it is. So I enjoy secular music. And I, and I have some deep folk on here that says, you listen to secular music? Yes, and so do you. You're in the elevator and you don't even realize that you're listening to a, a classical. I don't care if it's classical, it's still secular. If it's instrumental, it's still secular, secular, a lot of it. But depending on the intent of the writer, the writer intended to be secular. Because you buy the, if you buy the album or the jacket or, or whatever it comes in, even though there's no lyrics there, it's still meant to be secular because where did you find it? On the bin at Walmart in the secular section, okay? It's secular. You may not know it, but most, most of the music, music that you hear outside that you're tapping your feet to is secular. So some of y'all have gotten too deep. You're just too deep. And I'm not going to just be surrounded by only gospel music when I live in the world. I'm not of the world, but I live in the world. And there's some songs that are good for me to listen to because it inspires me to do a good deed. It inspires me because I'm happy, okay? I like that song. Now, I ain't going to play it in, in church because I don't think that song belongs in church I'm, I'm because I'm happy. That's, that's, that, that's not really edifying the saints. It's really not a psalm, hymn, or spiritual song. It, I don't think it belongs in the church, but it belongs in my car, okay? It belongs in the elevator. It belongs on the, on the, and when I go skating, I'll play that. I, when I hear that song on the, on the skating ring, I'm jamming to that because I'm happy, because I am happy. Ain't nothing wrong with that song. Secular don't mean evil. All right? These songs are, are nice. You read books, don't you? Do you read gospel books? Do you only read the Bible? Or do you read secular periodicals? Do you read the newspaper? Do you, do you read novels? Do you, okay? Y'all ain't knocking that, are, are you? But you're knocking uh, secular music because it ain't got Jesus, Lord, Holy Ghost in it. Some of y'all are too deep for your own underwear. Oh, man, Deborah, I don't know if you go outside, you're going to hear secular music. Wherever you go, you're going to hear it. You're on Facebook, YouTube, you're going to hear it on your computer. When you watch TV, you're going to hear secular music in the commercials. No matter where you go, you're going to hear it. Your ding, ding, ding in your car when you turn the ignition on, it might be a tune as a recognizable tune to somebody else. You may not recognize it, but it's probably a second secular song. You hear it wherever you go, all right? Yes, but you're also deep. You're too deep to, you're so heavenly minded, but you're no earthly good. And that's why the world can't do nothing with you. I'm not telling you got to roll in the mud with the world, but Jesus sat with the publicans. He sat with the prostitutes and those who you said ain't no good. Why, why they, uh, the disciples told uh, the Pharisees were upset with Jesus because he was hanging out with them. Why ain't you hanging out with them and being a light to them and a witness to them? Not for what Michelle Williams says. She says she, she's in Destiny's Child. She keeps going back so she could be a light to them. That ain't the kind of light Jesus was talking about. Shake your booty and, and take your clothes off and do whatever. So what? Her, she wears long skirts and whatever when she does. But she do the same moves. She in the same audience. She's singing the same songs, okay? And so she want to be a light. I'm sorry, y'all. I love her, but I can't go with that. All right, Jesus didn't sit with, uh, go into the hotels with the prostitutes and lay with them because he wanted to be a light to the prostitute. Uh, come on, baby, let's make love because I want to be a light to you. He didn't go with the publicans, the tax collectors, and was robbing poor single mothers out there. I want to be a light to the tax collectors, so I want to rob y'all blind. Because that's what tax collectors were doing. Okay, he didn't go out there and finagle and roll in the mud with them. He's he talked with them and walked with them, and they wanted something from him. He didn't need nothing from them. That's my only point here, people. I'm not saying I go to the clubs and things like that. I don't do that. But let me tell you, this one thing: if I was married, I would go to some spots where there is dancing. Yes, I would. Look at y'all. Look at your nose and went all wide now. Now you look at you. You're, you're upset and fainting. Some of you deep folk are fainting when I said that. If I was married, I would go to some places where there's dancing. 
and no smoke, and no liquor, I know weed. I ain't talking about them places. There are some decent places. There's some ballrooms. Oh, I said ballroom. Oh, oh y'all upset now. Where I could take my wife and we're dancing, okay? The way they used to do it, man. Y'all just so deep. Matter of fact, I would I would suggest not nah, let me not do that. Okay. Oh, I can't do it. Yes, meat for the soul, for Verly, Verly. I, I, I know. I say your, I say your name. I say your name so fast a lot of times. Okay, okay. Let me go. Uh, Veronica, who can't sing? She can't sing. She who? Did I mention a woman? I don't know. I be yapping. I don't know what I'm saying. Okay. Music is language. Veronica says, "Amen." I believe that music is language. Yes, and it is. It is. It is a universal language. It. I don't think it is the universal language. I think mathematics, I believe. I fought with the other brother. Y'all know who I'm talking about. I believe mathematics is the universal language of the world, but music is a universal language. I believe that and is recognized by everybody. It's recognized. It's recognized, but sometimes it's confusing. But mathematics, one plus one will always be two. No matter where you are, it will always be two. I don't care what the other brother said. One plus one equals two around the world. But this sounds like crap to y'all, but that's music to someone else, but it's still recognized as a sound. It's music. Understand that. And it, it causes a conversation to happen. That's why I don't think it's a universal. It is a universal language. It is not the number one. Oh, that's another story. Oh, Michelle. Michelle Williams. <laughs> I ain't saying nothing. I ain't saying nothing. All right? This is going long, this is going long enough. All right. Till we meet, till we meet again, till we meet at Jesus' feet, till we meet, till we meet, till we meet, we meet again. I'll be with you. Songwriters, I know Stevie Wonder. Yep, and I never. Well, he know God. He may not be like what we want him to be. I ain't even gonna call him saved or unsaved. I ain't gonna call him any of that. But I tell you one thing: that boy right there could write some songs. Yeah, and I think God is in the details. It's just that God is patient and He's waiting on folks. To come home. And God is the only one I know that will hire a man. And when that man mess up, God will fire him, but let him still work. Mm. Pastor, elder, yeah, evangelist, apostles. You're fired, but he's going to let you still work. That's amazing. How we know? Because they're going to see Jesus and Jesus is going to say, oh, you won them for me? Thank you. You cast out devils? And they did. Mm -hmm. He fired them, but he let them still work. He says, okay, thanks. Now, go. I never knew you. That means they were still working. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of anointed men and women out there that are still working, but God fired them. All right. Gotta go. May the Lord watch between me and thee. 
Good night, and may God continue to bless you. Bless you. Uh, Beverly, Victoria, blessings to you, Deanne. Lavetta, you're late, but blessings to you. Um, and Deatrice, De blessings to you. Shante, you know I love you, and you're an amazing husband. What a, what a great couple. Y'all get to know that couple right there. If anybody love anybody, okay, let me say this. If anybody love anybody, married, I'm talking about married, Shante and her husband are madly in love with each other. One of the most encouraging couples I know out there, married, because too many married people hate each other today. They're only staying in the same house because for security reasons. Some for sexual reasons, because now they're giving sexual favors to each other because they don't want to go out, so they do it for that, all right? For the kids, for security and job, the first lady is married to the pastor, so she can't leave, it's all right? The wife in the White House, I know of two wives in the White House, they wish they could walk away, but they couldn't because they was the first lady of America, and they slept in two separate beds, I can almost guarantee you that. So there are a lot of married couples out there who hate each other. They can't stand each other. They don't even want to come home. I know what that feels like. I didn't want to come home. Not the hate part. I didn't want to come home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But Shante and her husband, they like each other. All right. Good night to you. Good night to you. See you tomorrow. Yeah, we can we can go back and do some evening manners and just do some hymns and we can shut down the teaching. Because when I do my evening manners, I don't do a lot of talking. Y'all know that. I just play some hymns and go home and prepare you for Monday when you go to work. All right. Love you guys. Hit the share button. Go ahead. It's 13 of y'all left. If 13 of y'all hit the share button, the world will hear the gospel message. Praise God. YouTube, subscribe. Hit that bell down there on YouTube. That little bell right there. Bam. And then you'll get the notification. How about that? All right. So what's the journal show? And that guy too.